played a solid series against another good team, and it's it's on to the next challenge. That's it. It's it's May fifth, but we had a good challenge this weekend, and we, we we played well through it. Hey, it was another winning week for the Chicago Cubs, and despite their winning ways, there's still a lot of flaws on this team, but. Can the team fix all these things internally by getting healthy, or does Jed need to go shopping? We're going to talk about that. Speaking of which, there are some reinforcements coming back to the Cubs as early as this week. We're going to talk about those, plus recap the upcoming week here on the Setup Man YouTube channel. Hey, Setup Nation, welcome in. And as you can see, I'm in a hotel room and very last minute, my family and I are actually going to stay in Chicago here. We got stuck here last night coming back from New York and we decided we're going to go to the game tonight. We're going to go see Justin Seal pitch. So if you're going to be there, let me know. DM me on Twitter, on Instagram. Uh, drop in the comments where you're going to be sitting. would love to see as many of you as possible. And Thank you for those of you who have subscribed because we just hit the 2,000 subscriber mark and for being a channel for the Cubs for the short six months that we've been, that's just a very um, awesome thing for me to see. It's been fun to be able to interact with a lot of you, Talk Chicago Cubs. So thank you so much. Keep on sharing with your friends. Let's keep on growing this thing and having a lot of fun along the way. So hey, the big news is Justin Seals coming back to the Chicago Cubs since the hamstring strain that he had Back on the first game of the season, we finally get to see Justin back in a Cubs uniform pitching at Wrigley Field for the first time this season. And he's actually going to be pitching against Hugh Darvis, which is a rematch from a 2022 game when they both were nails back in 2022. So looking forward to seeing Justin back out there. you got to imagine he's going to be on some sort of pitch count, especially since he only had one rehab start. But the good news is that pretty much the entire time that he was down, he was still throwing. So you shouldn't see like a 50 pitch pitch count. I would imagine it'd be somewhere in the 70 to 80 pitch neighborhood. By the way, if you can hear my kid in the background, you're we're in a small hotel room, so that's going to happen. But hey, let's go ahead and recap the last game of the week, and then we're going to get into some of the things that are going to happen now that Justin Steele is back. So it was the rubber match on Sunday. Freddie Peralta was dominating through the fifth inning until... Mr. Nico Horner drove in this two-run double to the right center field alley. That brings home the first two runs of the game. Cubs lead 2 to nothing, and Dansby Swanson would later add a solo home run, looking to see his bat get back on track. You see, Javier Saad was just absolutely incredible. Once again, lowers his season ERA to 1.66 after six shutout innings. The really crazy thing about all this is that his runner in scoring position batting average this year is .80. The guy just does not give up hard contact when it comes to runners in scoring position. No bullpen drama this time around. Cubs win 5 to nothing. They go 4 and 3 on the week and they are tied for first place in the Central. Now, really two sides of this coin here. Number 1, they're 21 and 14 while all their big guys are down. Steele, Bellinger, Suzuki, Merriweather, Jordan Wicks is the latest one. You could also throw Kyle Hendricks and Drew Smiley into that mix. This team has gone through more injuries in April than I've seen for really any team, and especially any Cubs team in a very long time. But the resilience and the depth has been really shown here. There's also a little bit of luck involved, I would say, as well. So that's one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is that this could legitimately be a 25-plus win team if the bullpen and the defense were just a little bit better. In this last week alone, just some stats for you. The Cubs led in the eighth inning or later in six of the seven games. The starting staff had a .85 ERA, while the bullpen had a 3.92 ERA. Doesn't sound that bad, but you factor in all the errors that happen, especially while the bullpen was out there pitching, and it cost them. There were seven unearned runs, six were because of errors and one was because of the ghost runner in the extra innings game in New York. But the defense cost the Cubs two games in New York that they could have easily won. And then Alzali's blown save on Friday against the Brewers cost them a sweep, which is just a continuous broken record, unfortunately, for Albert Alzali. I don't know what they're going to do with him. But what I do know is that this needs to be fixed. This bullpen situation, the defense situation, it needs to be fixed. And a lot of people are saying, go shop, Jed, go get something done. And I, I just want to really say I don't think right now that that has to be the answer for the Cubs. And we're so early on in the season that I'd like to see, A, the Cubs get healthy, which is going to happen as soon as this week and maybe bleeding into the next week. And number two, 
moving some of those pieces around just to see where they can maybe fit better. So let's look at some of the pieces that will fall into place if Justin Steele comes back as planned tonight and then Jordan Wicks follows. You've got Ben Brown most likely going straight to the bullpen tonight, which we'll talk about in a second how that fixes one of the problems in the bullpen. And then likely my thought is Hayden Wisniewski goes to the bullpen. And I know what a lot of you are thinking. Well, Jordan Wicks hasn't been nearly the starter that Hayden Wisniewski is. And for that reason, Hayden should get more of a look. Absolutely, but it's a small sample size. And Jordan Wicks, I just don't see fitting into the bullpen with the Cubs right now. He's not the lefty specialist that you want out of the bullpen. I'm not sure if he's a long inning reliever kind of guy. I, I, he probably is, but I don't think that the, Cub, the Cubs organization sees it that way right now. I think they'd be more likely to send him to AAA if he comes back and starts to struggle because he does have plenty of options left. So for that reason, I think that Hayden Wisniewski goes to the bullpen for two reasons. Number one, yes, Jordan Wicks has a little bit more recent experience and recent success as a starter where Hayden Wisniewski has a couple of good starts since coming back. But number two is that Wisniewski, I think, is a much better weapon out of the bullpen and fills that spot that Keegan Thompson was supposed to be filling really for the last two years. And it looks like he was kind of back into that 2022 fight. In the last couple of games, Keegan has just not cut it, giving up a couple of leads or close to giving up a couple of leads. And then you see Wisniewski coming in and just electric. The guy retired 19 of his first 20 batters when coming back and being in the bullpen now in a few starts has been amazing. Went and shut out the Brewers for six and a third innings on Friday. And this is a guy that I think that if you look at it, say Jordan Wicks comes in, throws five innings, one or two runs. Hayden Wisniewski comes in as that piggyback guy and ends up throwing three innings, maybe even four innings to complete the game or three innings and then hands the ball over to the closer. That is a serious weapon that the Cubs are missing right now since you have Assad, who was supposed to be that guy at the start of the season, now is one of the best starters in baseball. And Keegan Thompson, who looked like he was ready to go back into that role, not quite fitting it. So I think Wisniewski is a huge weapon there. And then Ben Brown coming in and fixing that late inning bullpen situation. Not fixing, but maybe being a piece to potentially fix that late inning bullpen situation. Hector Neris, they're calling him Nervous Neris for a reason. He has been nothing but making everyone nervous every single time he goes in there in the ninth inning. Couple runners on every time. Walks, hits, and barely escaping with a one-run win basically every time he's gone out there as a closer. And, of course, Mark Leiter has been carrying the load this, this entire season, has had amazing numbers, but you cannot rely on him to continue to go out there and pitch every other day. That's not, not sustainable for 162 games. Yancy Almonte is on the uptick, somewhere around two earned runs in the last 10 innings that he's pitched, and that has been huge for the Cubs bullpen, but he's had some high highs and some low lows. So to say that he's a seventh, eighth, or ninth inning guy for the long run for this team so far this year, we just don't quite know yet. So immediately I see those two guys fixing that part of the bullpen situation, but there are some other hopefuls. Number one is Daniel Palencia. Since coming back and being recalled at the end of April, he's touching 101 almost every single outing where in his first stint with the Cubs in the beginning of April, his hardest thrown pitch was right around 98.7 miles an hour. So he's found some of that magic. His command has seemed to be better aside from hitting Harrison Bader to start the 11th inning the other day against the Mets. Aside from that, his command has been really, really spot on. And you love to see that from a guy who really has the best stuff in the Cubs bullpen. If he can just get the command there and get that swing and miss. And there's been run on that fastball too. 101, 102 with some run. That's dangerous out of the bullpen. You hope that he's on the uptrend here. You hope that he can start taking on more high leverage situations. And then Luke Little, you want to see him get back to the form that he was at the end of 2023. He had some flashes here when he was up with the club, but command was really an issue. So hopefully Luke can figure out the command issues down at AAA because if he can, 97 and 98 from the left-hand side with that funky arm delivery is huge for this bullpen and could be a huge weapon as well. And guys, Cade Horton is coming. He's coming probably sooner than we think because he's already been promoted to AAA, and that's a sign that the Cubs have him on the fast track, and I see him, especially if the rotation is clicking on all cylinders, likely being a bullpen guy when he first comes in, and that can be huge for what is needed with this bullpen right now. 
when when it comes down to we talked about a couple shows ago, he could maybe be a closer, maybe be an eighth inning guy. I don't know what they're going to do with that, but I do know that is a piece that can fix this Cubs bullpen where it stands. So there's a ton of internal options here, and I hate to see Jed go and make some moves and sign some guys, and then you really handcuff yourself at the actual trade deadline because you're at the luxury tax threshold. And so I, I just don't really think that that's a smart move right now, given that they're in first place, they have some breathing room, and they have some healthy guys coming back off the IL to potentially fix this situation. I know as fans, we all want to go out there and say, just go DFA this guy, trade this guy, go sign this guy. And that's you know the easy, quick fix solution. But when you think about it last year, right? Kyle Hendricks, DFAM, he looks terrible in the minor leagues, and then he comes in, he's one of the most reliable starters. Had we DFA'd him, I don't think that the Cubs were even competing for a playoff spot last year. Now, if all of this happens, by the way, Kyle Hendricks comes in and suddenly he's back in the rotation. A lot of this gets thrown out of whack, which, as Cubs fans right now, I don't know that we really want to see that happen. But as the Cubs organization, I could see it potentially being a route that they go just to give Kyle a fair handshake before he goes and packs his bags on the way out. So assuming that doesn't happen, let's take a look at what the actual pitching situation looks like. It's up on your screen right now. The rotation, Justin Steele, Shota Imanaga, Jamison Tyone, Javier Assad, and Jordan Wicks. Then in the bullpen, you got Wisniewski, Alzali, hoping that he can figure it out here soon. Palencia, Lovelady, Almonte, Leiter, Brown, and Neris. That rounds out the eight-man bullpen. And again, if Wisniewski and Brown can fit themselves into those roles, you like the look of this bullpen a lot more than it currently stands. I think the corresponding moves for this is that Keegan Thompson and Colton Brewer will be sent to AAA Iowa. Now, in regards to the defense, there are two big moves coming that are going to probably fix a lot of offensive and defensive issues, and that is Cody Bellinger returning and Seiya Suzuki as well. Could happen as early as this week. A lot of great uh, stuff coming from the Cubs in terms of their development and their getting back onto the playing field. I think this is a lot sooner than most fans thought, especially after you saw the fractured rib from Cody Bellinger that felt like it was going to be a month at least. But somehow, some way, he's getting back out there and it looks like he's going to be healthy and ready to go. So you're probably seeing Miles Mastroboni and Alexander Canario headed back to AAA. And I think that means that PCA is staying. He has been everything that you want from him as an outfielder and just good enough at the plate to be able to say that he should stay on this team. 242 batting average, a little bit of pop, and a 651 OPS is nothing to write home about, but the intangibles of the way that he's been playing the outfield, a couple stolen bases while he's been on the base paths, this guy has really been everything that you wanted him to be when he came up in September last year. So for me, with there being some flexibility in the outfield and now in the infield with the return of Bellinger and Suzuki, I think that the best thing for the Cubs to do is to keep PCA on this roster. And especially with Michael Bush really struggling recently, a 176 batting average in his last 14 games, only four extra base hits. That's a guy that is going to need a few more off days. And we know the way that Cody Bellinger hits against lefties. I can absolutely see him going over to first base and the Cubs saying, we don't want to risk that fractured rib. We don't want you diving for balls in the outfield. We're going to DH you and play you at first base. DH you when there's righties in the lineup or righties that we're facing so that Bush can get some play at first base. And then when it's lefties, you're going to go over to first base, Cody, and Bush will get a day off. That would be, honestly, when we think about that, an amazing defensive situation. You've got Gold Glover in left in Ian Happ. You've got Gold Glover in Dansby Swanson and Nico Horner. And you've got a gold glover in Cody Bellinger, be it a center fielder, over at first base. And we saw how he played first base last year. Plus, a potential gold glover, and likely for years and years to come, a gold glover in PCA in center field. This is potentially the best defense in baseball. And I know a lot of you are like, well, you still have Christopher Morrell at third base. Guys, Christopher Morrell has not made an error since the fifth game of the season. He has tightened things up over at third base. Every time a ball is hit over there now, I'm not holding my breath. The throws have been on point. This has been very, very exciting to see. And he's playing a serviceable third base, which is exactly what you asked of him. Michael Bush still has been off and on at first base, so moving Bellinger over there to tighten up the defense at first will be a huge plus. And really, the only weak spots would be Seiya Suzuki in right field and then your catcher position with Young Gomes and Miguel Amaya. Amaya has been 
less than ideal as a catcher and Gomes with him getting less playing time. The defense has been a little worse behind the home plate as you've seen this year. But aside from that, every other position, I dare you to find another team in baseball that has a better defense in those positions. And looking ahead to the Padres series starting tonight, you've got you Darvish against Justin Steele. This is game 14, 15, and 16 of 16 games in a row for the Cubs. You'd love to see them get that off day on Thursday, but you'd love to see them get a series win, maybe a series sweep before that. And of course, the Padres bring a revamped team with Luis Arise, who was traded from the Marlins to the Padres, so not going to be an easy task. But tonight, you've got Yu Darvish against Steele. On Tuesday, you've got Joe Musgrove against Shota Imanaga, probably the best pitcher on planet Earth right now. And then Council will send Wisniewski to the mound in the finale against Dylan Cease, who is also having a very stellar season at 4-2 with a 255 ERA. If you're at the game tonight, come say hi to me. Once again, I'm going to be wearing this, this hat, this shirt. Would love to see you there. That's going to do it for me now, Setup Nation. Let's go first place Cubs. I'm going to go put my arm on ice. We'll see you next time.